Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Porter, Professor of Ecology at the University of Georgia. In this short video, I will explore the interplay between book collecting and my academic research specialty on corals and coral reefs. First, a little bit about the collection. A vast majority of the books in my professional library were acquired as a faculty member here at UGA. I am delighted that both my book collection and my coral collection will reside here at my home institution. To have a collection stay together and be at an institution where it will be used and appreciated is every collector's dream. I built the book collection before the advent of eBay or the World Wide Web. When I started collecting in 1969, there were 32 antiquarian booksellers worldwide that put out natural history themed catalogs. I subscribed to all of them. And in addition, I sent out what is called a Deseradata list of books I was looking for. Over the last 50 years, I whittled this list down from 110 pages to less than a half page. The collection now contains approximately 85 to 90% of all books and monographs ever published on corals and coral reefs back to 1500. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. Throughout my career, I have always had an interest in art, science, and history. Building a professional library unites all three of these. I will give you an example from my own career of this cross-fertilization. One of the first books I ever purchased was a copy of Seville Kent's The Great Barrier Reef of Australia. In it, he used an 8x10 Graflex view camera to take extremely high resolution photographs of the coral reef at low tide. His images are so beautiful that they are still used in tourist brochures today. I got the notion that I could do the same, only subtitly, below the waves. When I set up my underwater photo stations in Discovery Bay, Jamaica in 1976, I did so to watch coral reefs grow. I had absolutely no idea at the time that instead I would watch coral reefs decline. Two fundamentally important things emerged from this work. First, these are the oldest geo-referenced images. That means we know precisely where they came from, ever taken on a coral reef. And second, these images now turn out to be the only geo-referenced images we have of what coral reefs looked like before, as seen here in 1976, and after, as seen in exactly the same place 10 years later, they began to deteriorate under the influence of global warming and ocean acidification. In 2017, these Discovery Bay images, which had been inspired by Seville Kent's work, were used in our documentary film, Chasing Coral, on the effects of climate change on coral reefs. That film went on to win first place in Sundance, a Peabody Award, and then an Emmy for Best Nature Documentary. I draw a direct line between my book collecting and both my teaching and research success. Some of the books in this library are almost 500 years old. We have a right and perhaps a duty to ask, how will the scholarship of today survive to inspire and inform future generations? In my own career, punch cards gave way to floppy disks which gave way to hard drives. The art and science stored in these transitory and ephemeral media is written in now defunct and unreadable computer languages. We owe it to the next generations of humankind to do as well with the transmission of our knowledge as these early scholars did with their printed work. And I hope these antiquarian books and manuscripts will inspire another 500 years of collecting on corals and coral reefs. Thank you.